November 17th, 2023. Guys, uh, something just a little different, not a long video here, but this weekend, the Leonid meteor shower peaks. And we're going to look at uh, where you uh, can see it and things like that. But let me say this. In 1999, it was one of the great shows of all time. As a matter of fact, they mentioned that in this article. If you guys can remember where you were at 24 years ago this weekend, then uh, you may have seen it. We were fortunate. Uh, Tina and I were out in our cabin before we built the place we're at now. We're still in the woods, but this cabin was on a creek, and there was nothing surrounded it, so there was absolutely zero light pollution. Now, we had a high window on the east side, and that's where you'll see it coming from, the same place the sun rises, basically. But um, it, I woke up at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, guys, and it was amazing. I've never seen anything like it. I've seen hundreds of meteors and shooting stars, been out on the boat in Florida, things like that. You know how it can, you can see stuff really good there. But um, never anything like this. This was more like a movie. These were giant green balls of fire. And you could see it just by the time you opened your eyes and looked, you would see dozens headed straight for you. And it looked like incoming fireballs uh, to the planet Earth. And they were huge and they were moving very fast. And that has to do with... This particular meteor shower, guys, rotates around the sun the opposite direction that the Earth does. So it's a head-on situation. And so they also are the fastest meteors. Some come from the side or over or behind. But the meteor, uh, the Leonid meteor shower, again, it's a head-on collision. But if you, any, you can remember 1999, say something in the comments. And I th there was a couple of other years there, and we'll read about that here. But that was, a, I've never seen a celestial sight or any sight that even compared to that. It was, again, looking, it looked like you were in a science fiction movie. Now, this is an illustration of the night sky tonight and tomorrow night on the 18th. And it's showing the linear meteor shower, uh, and it originates from the Leo constellation. That's where it gets its name. And when you see it right here, guys, this is going to be before before daybreak. It's going to be an after midnight type event. But you can keep an eye on it because, again, this is just the peak. You may see some stray ones. But uh, you see Leo here. You see Cancer here. Leo Minor, Ursa Minor. And uh, right in the center of that, looking east, notice this red right here, southeast to the right, east, northeast basically just a hair north of due east that's going to be uh, depending on your location but do you know where east is you know where the sun comes up so if, if you want to see something that's amazing check it out now every year they're different and we they really don't know till they get here now sometimes and i haven't found the information yet i have seen where they have a radar, space radar that where they can track these things coming from a long way away and sometimes it will show thicker clusters. Sometimes it will show a thinner cluster. And the thicker clusters are what you're going through uh, when you see these uh, events like 1999. That's what I'm talking about. But, the again, you want to have as much or zero light pollution as you can. And if you can uh, film any of this, do it. But, guys, if it happens and you're in a clear location where you can see, you will be amazed. Again, that 1999 was an exceptional year, but this is the uh, largest meteor shower of the year also. Now, guys, you can read the article and see these maps and charts that I'm showing you. Go to bpearthwatch.com. Tina has this article, and the article's on the right. Just scroll down. You'll see one of them, and that's talking about the Leonids. It says, probably the most famous of the annual meteor showers will soon be reaching its maximum, the Leonids. These ultra-fast meteors are due to reach their peak on Saturday morning, November 18th. That will be before you get up in the morning. It said, this shower is known for producing some of the most amazing meteor displays in the history of astronomy. Most notable are meteor storms, such as in 1799, 1833 and 1966 when meteor rates of tens of thousands per hour were observed 
most recently, 1999, that's the one that I was telling you about, 2001 and 2002, they were lesser Leonid displays of up to only a few thousand meteors per hour that had taken place. And so that's the one I saw, 1999, and the few thousand per hour were brilliant. It was amazing. But I can't imagine back in 1966, I was here, but I, I don't remember that meteor shower. As a kid, you know, you know, they don't. We didn't have social media. We didn't have the information we have now. But the 90, 1999 guys, they're saying a few thousand meteors per hour. That's impressive, but not like 1799 up through 1966. Unfortunately, the negative impact of these turn of the century Leonid showers is that many were given the impression that they can expect a similar occurrence of celestial fireworks from the Leonids every year that I explained that I've seen the charts and on some videos years ago, we were tracking, it may have been the Leonids, but, um, they, you could see how thick or how thin these showers were. Some were very dense. Now the IMO, which is the international media organization, they are only forecasting, uh, our rates of 10 to 15 per hour with a peak around five, clock uh, a.m. universal time on november the 18th the moon is waxing crescent and will set before 8 30 p.m. on friday evening that's tonight and will pose no interference whatsoever but uh, guys if you can see 10 to 15 of these per hour they're amazing fireballs that's what i'm saying just one good one and i bet you i would bet that uh, tomorrow morning we'll starting to see videos pop up of these coming through uh, people's outdoor cameras and security cameras, things like that, and people taking pictures. More than likely, we'll see a lot of that. It says, but what for? Uh, wh whatever forecast you trust, be mindful that even at their best, the lineage are expected to dart across your line of sight on an average of once every three to six minutes. And that's only assuming you have a wide open view of the entire sky and are blessed with dark, non lighted, polluted conditions. So, if, if, what a great night to camp out somewhere uh, with a great view, guys, with no light pollution. You, it may be something that uh, you'll never forget. And it goes on to mention it's pretty straightforward, and I, I agree. They say just kick back, lay back, where you can see as much of the sky as you can. And I've done it uh, on balconies, and I've done it on boats. You just lay back and let your eyes focus on the sky if you've got clear uh, weather. And uh, it'll, it's, again, an amazing sight. Now, Leo, the constellation, does not start coming fully into view until after midnight hours, so that uh, that would be the best time to concentrate on looking for them. As dawn uh, is about to break around 5 a.m. local time, the sickle will have climbed more than two-thirds of the way up from the southeast horizon to the point directly overhead called the zenith. Said also because the Leonids are moving along in their orbit around the sun in a direction opposite to that of the Earth. They slam into our atmosphere nearly head-on, resulting in the fastest meteor velocities possible, about 45 miles per second. Such speeds tend to produce brighter meteors, which, uh, which leave long-lasting streaks or vapor trains in the wake. And I think we'll see a lot of those pictures tomorrow. Now, the Leonids receive their name because of the shower's emanation point from where the meteors seem to fan out. It, it's located within the constellation of Leo, the line, from within the backward question mark pattern of stars known as the sickle. The meteors are caused by a periodic comet Temple Tuttle, which sweeps through the inner solar system every 33.3 years. Now, something that these meteor showers always remind me of, may be wrong, just speculation here, is God has, I think he's telling Job, you do not know what I have in store in those times. Do you remember that, guys? Someone... If you remember the verse, put it in the video comments. And it's uh, probably maybe in near the end of Job, maybe 37, 38, one of those chapters right in there, I think. But anyway, he tells Job, you have no idea what I've got in store, in my storehouses. And he's talking about things like this. It says, uh, each time the comet passes closest to the sun, it leaves a river of rubble in its wake. 
a dense trail of dusty debris. A meteor storm becomes possible only if Earth were to score a direct hit on a fresh dust trail ejected by the comet over the past couple of centuries. And if you guys remember ISON, it was a solid comet. And we would looked at it very closely and seen that it had what's called multiple nuclei. It had split apart. And some scientists were saying it would hit the sun. I didn't think so because you could look at the projection on it. But I did say it would split apart. I had no idea it would bust into millions of pieces and actually fan out. If you look at the some of the first images, about 40 million miles, 20 million miles in either way. It didn't hit the sun. It just completely busted apart. And that's because it's a slingshot effect. As it was coming in to the outer solar system, I sun was traveling around a million miles per day. As it got into the inner solar system, it was up to 11 million miles per day. And that that uh, centrifugal force, as the sun's gravity grabbed it and slung it back out into the space, was more than it could handle. Now, I don't know if we'll ever go through a comet I sun meteor storm or not, but that would be something that would be very close to what God was telling Job about. It says the lion's share, no pun intended, of comet dust can be found just ahead and trailing behind Temple Tuttle. That comet last swept through the inner solar system in 1998. That's why spectacular meteor showers were seen in 1999, 2001, and 2002 with declining numbers thereafter. Even though we see it every year, it's thickest when it comes around the sun, and it again is stripped back some. In 2016, Temple Tuttle reached aphelion. That's the point in its or- orbit as far from the sun as it gets, 1.84 billion miles. Now, the comet is on its way back toward the sun in the inner solar system and will sweep closest to the sun again in May 2031. That will be a spectacular meteor shower if we're, if we're still here to see it. Now, if you think about 2031, that's seven years. They're saying it could be a meager year this year, but it is also, and I talked about this, the possibility of it, in the general vicinity of the comet where the heaviest concentration of meteoroids are as well. In contrast, at the point in the comet's orbit where it will be passing by on Saturday morning, there's only a scattering of particles, bits of comet debris that crumbled off the comet's frozen nucleus perhaps a millennia or two ago. Now, different... uh, scientists around the world have slightly varying opinions about how thick this will be. In Russia, they're saying the 2023 Leonids are expected to show lean activity this year. According to a highly regarded Russian expert in meteor shower predictions, Mikhail Maslov, forecasts indicate a moderate maximum, which he suggests will stay approximately at the same level, about 15 meteors per hour during the period from 0 to 1200 UT. Uh, Universal Time on November 18th. Canadian meteor forecaster Margaret Campbell Brown and Peter Brown in the 2023 Observer's Handbook of the Royal uh, Astronomical Society of Canada are a little more optimistic in suggesting rates of up to 20 per hour with as a maximum occurring around 600 UTC time on November 8th. That comes to around midnight for Eastern and Central North America. So 20 per hour, that'd be a good camp out, wouldn't it, guys, if you got good weather? Now, if you go to the website and click on this article again on the right, you'll see that in the blue here, there's some very good links on how to photograph meteors, meteor showers, uh, best cameras for that type of thing, best telescopes, best binoculars, whatever. But it says if you can't wait until we have a more spectacular uh, meteor shower from the Leonids, this December, the Geminids, will be considered to be the best meteor shower of the year, producing over 100 per hour. They're expected to peak on Wednesday night, December the 13th. Not that far away, is it? Space.com will provide you with all the details as we get closer to the date, so stay tuned. If you want to get an up-close look at some of the stars and planets during the new moon, again, that this goes into the links, so check that out, guys. But uh, it's something that uh, is, is amazing especially if you're in the right place. But uh, between now and December 13th, the sky is going to be fairly active. We're watching this, guys. You watch it. It's a heads up. Be safe.